thought about whether or not you want a glossy finish or a matte finish. I want a glossy. Glossy, okay. So I'm gonna send you the same offer. If you want, you can use a mason stain and a clear glaze, or you are welcome to, and same to you, Susanna, you're welcome to use um, the glazes I'm mixing for the class. However, they will not be as controlled as what you can do with the, the stain. So if you work with the stain, it's a little bit more like, like the color you see is the color you're gonna get. Um, the thing about glazes is they're really beautiful, but like they can be very unpredictable. So sometimes that's a nice thing though. Um, so when you get into color, if you use the white clay body, which will really play into those vibrant colors a little better, you won't have to do like a, like a white base coat. Um, and that could be a nice sort of like ease into it. Um, if you use the B-Mix or if you use, so the, do you know which clay body you're going to use? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, do we have to use the, uh, what was the other? Um, so you've got that Longhorn Red, which is what we've been using so far. Um, and then you've got uh, this, which is the throwing clay body, but it's it's just as nice as, you know, the... the okay, because I only have the, the red one. Okay, so you're welcome to keep using that. However, that will change your color palette just a little bit. We'll have to do something, like you'll have to put a white coat, and we can make it a little easier than just like um, having to paint it on with slip. What we'll do is mm -hmm. I'll show you how to do that when we get to that juncture. So as soon as you're finished sculpting, bring it in and put it on that bisque shelf. So I can get it bisque as like as soon as possible. Okay. 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 All right. Cool. So um, it making texture on these things and like that sort of grainy texture that we're getting is is really nice. And I'm really just like taking the narrow edge of my trimming tool and just using that to pull away material to create that wood texture. Um, and just like with that box, uh, we wanna make sure we get all these little grubby bits off and we wanna make sure we make it accessible to our flower. Now with these like trumpet shaped ones, they're sort of like intuitive. You can just leave it hollow right in the middle, just like that. And there you've got your flower, you know, your place for your flower to get in. Um, with this sort of like traditional mushroom shaped one, I'm actually going to, you know, those little like spots on your traditional, like, I say traditional, what's a traditional mushroom? I, your atypical mushroom, the one you see in like, like Mario, that's the one I'm thinking of. The red, the one with the red cap and the white spots. Yes. That is not, I don't, wow, be careful with your tools. I just sliced myself. Learn from my mistakes. I, I get too comfortable and then, you know, I end up sad. I'm just going to use, so this is hollow up, up top. And basically all I did was create a little pinch pot and I flipped it over. Um, and all I'm doing is poking a hole and then using my, my fettling knife, I'm just like carving a hole on the side for like blossoms to sort of sit in. Cause it's hollow in the middle, just like the one next to it, but it's got this cap and the cap is the aesthetic part. And we want to make sure that that's there, but also we want to make sure it's a functional flower base. Okay. So I've got some holes and there, the clay's a little too wet for me to make sure they're like really perfect at this point in time. So I'm going to let that dry so that I can 
go back and clean them up later. But basically it sort of looks looks like this and all the little flowers were, were sort of just sit on the edges here. Um, so for my mushroom sculpture and maybe this could really be a nice touch for yours. I'm curious about how to make this base part more real feeling or more like um, moss or something, you know, like, is it on a tree? Is it on a rock? Where is my mushroom grouping hanging out? So say I decide it's on, I think I, think I want it to be on a, uh, it's on some moss. I've got little rocks and I've got moss. How do I imitate that moss texture? Well, you would be, you will be surprised to surprised. It's super duper easy. I'm going to take a little bit of this water and this like drier clay that I've got over here from that other project. And I'm going to just sort of mush it into like a slip like paste as much as I possibly can. But I want it to be a little more liquid. And I want the chunks to be like a little bit chunkier. As much as possible. And I'm really just going to take all these little dry bits and just crumble them up into my bowl because I am making, it's kind of like um, flocking, which is that uh, like that grass or velvet texture thing that you would use to make something feel like, like grass. We're just gonna go in, this is a little gross, but you know, sometimes that's what you gotta live with. And the drier your little like bits are for this, the better your um, your fake texture is gonna be. Just really get in there. Okay, so it's kind of like a little bit gritty and chunky and you can really like get into it and like mix up a slip and then get some more of those little like crummy bits. Like I'm gonna just sacrifice one of these, uh, what do you call it? One of these um, fortune cookies to the effort. <laughs> well, this is not moving as fast as I'd like it to be. So we're gonna, I will be right back. Okay. 
Alrighty, so I just went out and got some pre-made slip because, you know, we got time for that. All right, cool. So I've got some, some really thick slip here and I've got this sort of like crummy looking sponge, but it's okay. It, it'll do what I need it to do. So I'm just going to grab some of that on my texture here and I'm going to just sponge brush it onto my piece like this. And if you've got some of those like leftover crummy bits, you can just sort of sprinkle them. It's starting to look like, like that. You can just sort of get in there and just dab, 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 dab. Keep going all around. Make sure you get all the way through. And don't be afraid to get just like a big fat glob of clay slip because like the texture is what we're shooting for, you know? And sometimes the texture gets to be a little three-dimensional. Cool. So we've got this, and if you've got some of those like um, like drier bits, like I'm gonna sacrifice another another fortune cookie to the cause. You can just sprinkle them on top, like little like rock sprinkles, all the way across. And because the slip we've put on is so wet, it'll act like fro cake frosting essentially and it'll fire all the way through. So the order of operations for this is, you know, throw out a little slab, let it dry completely, crumble it up, sponge on, some texture. Cool. And so at this point, I'm pretty happy with my my, my mushrooms. Let me see if I can get y'all a better, uh, better uh, 360 view here. And when I go in to sort of paint them, they're going to look even like better. Um, and you can, honestly, I could probably keep carving away. And if you're going to do gills, the same way that I did the stalks here is going to be really helpful for that. Like that's pretty much, I think what you were going to do, but I would say play with it and get, do whatever, you know, visually appeals to you. Um, but basically we want, I wanted this to sort of look like a, a mossy mushroom, sort of situation um and i think even like looking at it i could even cut through to this this one like cut it off and make the mushroom cap like a little lid and put like like one of those little fake um 